Since the day human beings developed eyes and their curiosity, we have been tracking the motions of planets in the sky. A German mathematician and astronomer named Johannes Kepler helped us understand how the planets moved by developing his laws of planetary motion. But just knowing the motion of the planets was not enough. We can now understand how the planets moved in the night sky, but we didn't quite understand why. Our modern ideas of gravity still had to be developed. Thanks to the efforts of Galileo, we could now begin to understand what gravity was. And Newton came along and applied his calculus to gravity, creating what we now know as Newton's Law of Gravity. Newton's Law of Gravity was great. We were able to understand why the planets move the way they do. We were also able to calculate the orbits of planets we had not even discovered yet. Newton's laws of gravity helped us discover Neptune and Pluto. Now the planets of our solar system, planets like Mercury, which are actually very close to the sun, go around in their elliptical orbits. Now these elliptical orbits actually move or precess very slightly throughout their orbital lifetimes. What astronomers had observed about the slow precession of Mercury and what mathematicians had meticulously calculated about its precession didn't quite match up. They actually differed by about 43 arc seconds per century. And this is where Newton's law of gravity began to fall apart. Another German scientist named Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity in 1916. In Einstein's theory, space was not actually flat, but it was curved by the objects existing in it. Any object attempting to go straight through free space would be deflected by this curvature caused by large masses. Masses such as our own sun. Our sun creates a space-time curvature that our planets in our solar system use to orbit around it. In the case of Mercury, its elliptic orbit actually takes it pretty close to the sun. Now Mercury does not stay on the same curvature of the sun during its orbit. It actually gets farther, closer, and farther again because of this elliptic pattern. This change in the space-time curvature actually affects the orbit of Mercury. If you were to calculate the orbit of the ellipse with respect to general relativity, you would actually find that the precession of Mercury changes by 43 arcseconds per century. This calculation of Mercury's orbit agreeing with what's actually observed was one of the proudest moments of Einstein's career. Another observable phenomena related to general relativity is called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing occurs when us, observers from Earth, attempt to observe a very distant object with a collection of mass in between, such as a cluster of galaxies. A massive galaxy in between the distant object and Earth will curve the light as it passes by it. This curvature is what creates the lensing effect that we observe from here on Earth. Any mass in space can cause this effect, even a mass as relatively small as a single star. A single photon in space traveling along can have its path curved by a star and then continue in the direction that it was curved onto. However, one of the problems was the path predicted using classical physics did not match with what we observed. When the calculation was done again, this time using general relativity, it actually matched 
with what we observed. The universe is a big place, and there's still a lot to be understood about it, and general relativity is just one more tool in our tool belt to help us figure it out. It will take physicists, astronomers, and dreamers like us to take these tools and develop new ones to better understand the world around us.